Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we're going to talk about GitHub Copilot CLI, which is currently in public preview. This feature got just released today and really wanted to talk about the GitHub Copilot CLI. And this is pretty much close to what the Cloud Code or uh, Amazon's Q or Warp Terminal all offers. Everything, whatever they do, the exact same thing is available with the GitHub Copilot CLI as well. As you can see in this particular CLI, they have got the terminal native development, which means it works with the Copilot coding agent directly in your command line and there is no context switching required. And the GitHub integration is out of the box, which means you can access your repositories, your issues, your pull request, pretty much like whatever the a GitHub Copilot's coding agent does, the same thing can be done with the GitHub Copilot's CLI as well, which is an additional plus over here. And they have got the agentic capabilities, which means you can do build, edit, debug, and refactor your code with AI collaborators that can plan and execute the complex task, which is also amazing. And they have got the MCP server extensibility as well, which means you can work with the player MCP server, GitHub Copilot MCP server, and whatever that you have, you can do it. And they have got the full controls and things. The installation is very, very straightforward. All you have to do is just this particular command, npm install hyphen g. And if you run this, this is just going to work. And I will quickly show you how this actually works. And even before I jump into the copilot itself, I'll actually show you some of the settings that you can do in order for you to make it and work in a way that you really wanted to. And you can also choose different models, like how you can choose uh, in your uh, Visual Studio Code. Because as you can see in Visual Studio Code, we can actually choose the different models over here. And similarly, you can perform all these operations. And you can actually do all of these operations with the uh, co-pilots, uh, the CLI as well, so which is all amazing. I'm quickly gonna show you all of these over here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go to my terminal over here. And then I'm just going to do this particular command, the npx install hyphen g and then add uh, the copilot, which means it's going to install this particular copilot in the global space, which means it can be accessed. I mean, the copilot can be accessed in any of the folder that you have got. And once it is installed, you just have to use this particular command called copilot, and then it is going to do all of these for you. And you can see that they have got some option over here like help. So you can just go to this help. And then if you hit enter, you will notice that it's going to show you a lot of helpful command that you can use uh, to understand how this copilot really works. So you can add a directory to uh, to the allowed list of the file system that you wanted to. I mean, you can do the same thing after the copilot has been invoked as well. And then you can also set the allowed tools and allow uh, specific tools. And then you can also see there is a banner as well. So this is kind of neat because you can just say uh, hyphen hyphen uh, banner. And if you hit enter, it's going to show you this banner over here. So this is like an animated banners that you can use as well, which is quite amazing. And I'm just going to quit for now. I'm going to quickly show you some other options that the uh, copilot uh, offers and you can also see that the copilot has got uh, some more features over here like the help topics that you can go and choose with as well so for instance if i want to see the configuration settings that the copilot uh, you can do so you can just say like a uh, copilot help and then if you just put config over here then it's going to show you the configuration settings that you can use within the copilot over here uh, and similarly if you wanted to get the environment details of this particular copilot you can also get it for instance if you want to set an environment variable uh, let's say you want to use the copilot model as gpt5 you can specify that or you can also specify cloud around four which is default model but if you think that you don't want to use the Cloud 4 default model and you want to use the GPT-5, you can also do that as well. So everything is going to happen from this particular environment variable. But as that said, I'm going to quickly show you how you can work with the Copilot itself. So in order to do that, uh, I'm just going to say uh, Copilot uh, over here and then I'm going to say enter and see that the moment I hit enter, it's going to uh, just log in me to this particular uh, Exit Automation. And by default, the GitHub MCP server is going to be configured for me right and then i'm going to now do this operation so i'm going to say a slash and you can see that we have got a lot of different commands over here where you can also do, do this interactive commands like the uh, like list directory login log out and then there is something called as mcp you can also choose that as well so if i'm going to choose the mcp and if i hit enter you can see that i don't really have any of the mcp server at the moment but i can add a new mcp server by hitting this a over here and it's going to show me this particular command and you can actually uh, give the name of the playwright mcp server that you want to use with so i'm just going to say playwright uh, over here 
and then uh, we have got this option to choose the server type so it can be local http or sse uh, mine is local so i'm just going to leave that as it is and then i need to give the uh, name of the command and because i'm going to run the npx player mcp server so i'm just going to say npx over here and then the command argument that i need to pass in so the command argument is uh, going to be uh, uh, y uh, and then i also need to uh, specify i think i don't have to specify like this but i just can say y and then i need to give at execute automation uh, slash playwright uh, mcp server something like that so this way it's going to configure the player mcp server for me and there is no environment variable required and i'm going to choose all the tools which is available within the player mcp server uh, and then i'm going to do uh, command s or control s i think that's what they say control s to save my mcp server see that now the player mcp server uh, is configured for me uh, and i can see that particular player mcp server is coming up which is quite amazing so that is how we can uh, choose the or configure a player mcp server so the next time if i'm going to just exit this completely and if i'm going to open the copilot this time you can see that the player MCP, uh, mcp server is going to be just showing up for me as well by default uh, over here uh, and if i'm going to say navigate to uh, google.com and uh, take screenshot and if i'm going to hit enter this time it should invoke the playwright mcp server for me by default because i have configured uh, the playwright mcp server over here so let's see what's really going to happen this time and you can see that this time it has opened the playwright navigate tool which is part of the player mcp server that we have configured which is this one as you can see over here so it is invoking and i'm gonna say yes and approve this particular tool so which means it is going to open the browser for me uh, and it should navigate me uh, to uh, google.com uh, and then if i'm gonna say take the screenshot then it is gonna go and take the screenshot and it's gonna save it for me over there so it has saved uh, in the downloads folder as you can see over here so if i'm gonna go to the downloads folder you can see that uh, this is the google.com page that it has just taken the screenshot for me so this is already working so as you can see that it is the player mcp server is configured and it is working so this is how we can configure an mcp server uh, using the uh, the copilot cli uh, and then if i wanted to do uh, the execution operation itself so let's say i'm gonna say uh, can you try to analyze this code and tell me what improvements that i can make and if i hit enter what's going to happen right now is that it is going to go and analyze the entire code for me like pretty much what the uh, the cloud code does or what the uh, the warp terminal does or the amazon q does or whatever tool that you have used before so the same thing is going to happen over here as well and this is pretty cool to see that the github copilot also has got a cli which does exactly the similar kind of operation which is amazing and now we can do the similar kind of operation of using an agent as well if we wanted to because we are using the model which is the cloud sonnet 4 model so we can create an agent.md file to specify what is going to be the uh, the purpose of that particular agent for example it is going to be a coding agent or it can be a um, an ui ux developer agent or it can be a tester agent so you can create all of these configurations that if you wanted to in that particular agent.md uh, file and then if you try to run it it is also going to work as expected like how it used to work with the cloud code the same thing is going to work in the uh, copilot as well so it's, it's not going to be of any difference uh, over there so now you can see that it has generated the entire documentation details of what exactly this particular coding is uh, doing and uh, it's going to give me the information of what uh, we can use this particular uh, code for and it's going to give me that information over there which is quite amazing and now i'm just going to exit this particular code over here 
and I'm gonna go to one of my GitHub repository code and then we will see if we could able to create or use the power of the GitHub Copilot's coding agent and then try to access the pull request and also try to run everything from there. So in order to do that, I'm gonna get to my other directory and I'm just gonna go to one of my project where I have deployed the Azure DevOps uh, MCP server, which is currently available in our uh, GitHub Execute Automation repository. So this particular MCP server is basically used to perform perform uh, a, a story creations uh, in the ADO or test creation in the ADO. So it's a very, very super simple uh, MCP server. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to say uh, based on their documentation, we can access our repositories issues and pull requests using the natural language. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the copilot over here and I'm just going to say, yes, remember this particular folder for me. And this is in the main branch, as you can see over here. And I'm going to say, uh, can you update the readme file with more details and create a pull request and if i'm going to do this over here now what's going to happen is essentially it is going to update the readme file for me and then it's also going to create a pull request for me and then we can start using the github copilot's coding agent from there and I'm just gonna say approve this particular operation for now. So it's gonna update the readme file. And now it's gonna say that, do you wanna create a, a readme file in this particular branch? And I'm gonna say, yes, do that for me so that it's gonna create a separate branch for the uh, the readme file update. And then I'm just gonna push this particular change uh, to that particular branch. And now if I'm gonna go to the repository over here, you can see that we have got this update uh, readme file. So now I can go and see what are the details over here. So I'm just gonna say uh, yes and approve the GHPR for the rest of the running session, but I don't really want to do that. Rather, I will do it for myself because I'm not gonna give all the um, operation to the GitHub Copilot over here. And you can see that we have got this particular operation. Uh, so now I can go ahead and uh, review this particular PR uh, and then I can check in this particular uh, code over here, see, see that? The moment I do it, I can do it from here and I can confirm merge it. And let's say if there is going to be any issues in this particular uh, branch that I have got. So I'm going to create a new issue over here. Uh, I'm going to say the Azure MCP server does not support delete tests, something like that. And I'm just going to create this particular uh, issue over here and now once I create this one I can also now start using the github copilot over here you remember we have got this uh, assigned to the copilot and then once I start assigning this to the copilot it is going to go and fix it for me and you can see that it is working for me right now and this is again a collaboration with the github copilot coding agent and we can also use the CLI to perform all these operations. So these things are pretty cool as well. So these are the features that we have got with the GitHub Copilot CLI. And I think this is pretty good and pretty much exactly what the uh, cloud code uh, does for us. And I think this is an answer for the cloud code. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts about this particular CLI. And I think now the organizations who are using the Copilot uh, for their development can now use pretty much like what the uh, cloud core does catch the next one